Okay, this is Giovanni here at Frap Tools, and today we are going to do another live batching session with three random techniques that I just picked from our uh, techniques page. I'm going to use these three techniques as a starting point to create a patch from scratch. So this is going to be a sort of improvisation with a lot of trial and error to showcase the uh, thought process behind a uh, patch whose starting point you couldn't foresee. So, um, today's picks are the complex envelopes number two, the USTA polymeter number one, which you already used, and uh, the wave folder ratcheting. So, um, we have one technique on the USTA, one on Falistri, uh, which was one of the first ones that we filmed, as I recall and one on brain sauce uh, ping circuits. So first thing first, um, I think I'm gonna start with the USTA polymeter since it uh, implies that my two oscillators on the brain sauce are in tune. So this is always the trickiest part, or at least the one that you cannot do on the fly. So um, I'm gonna start by creating a new project on the USTA sequencer. Initialize, yes, okay. Um, then, to start, I'm going to uh, transpose my sequence up, I don't know, four octaves. And uh, uh, clone track one over track two, which are the ones that I will use to control Brainsaw's oscillator number one and Brainsaw oscillator number two. I'm going to play the sequence, so my two oscillators are uh, more or less uh, uh, already receiving a, a CV. And uh, they, are, they should be tuned to the same note. Uh, so I can see that there is some phasing going on. So I can even try to see if I... Oh, well, there is some phasing because this is already set as an LFO. So there we go. Nice. Better. Much better. Uh, then I'm going to patch my yellow oscillator on channel 1. And my green oscillator on channel 2. So we can see. Okay, so as always I am using just uh, a relative tuning, so the point here is not to play straight to A440, but to have at least two oscillators that are doing the same thing. We we'll always make sure that all the modulations are off. So for this sequence, I think I am going to stick with a Mixolydian mode. So my scale, I'm going to set my scale to uh, Mixolydian, apply the setting to all the tracks by holding down Set All. So now all my tracks are going to play Mixolydian. And basically I am going to create track for track one, sequence. Um, I think I'm gonna use an external clock so that I can have more control uh, over the, the overall tempo. So I'm gonna set all the tracks to work with external clock, okay. Um, now I am going to Okay, so I want to play with check some
Okay, so in this case, I created a length pattern. I didn't pay too much attention to how um, it should sound because I used the length value here so, to, so that um, it would say into 16 uh, stage length. For example, here it is already 17, so it would be an odd meter, which is what we are after, but not now. So I am going to clone my track 1 over track 2, and now they should be exactly the same. So now I want to... Um, create some rhythm so I need a couple of envelopes so I'm gonna set my phalistris generators time scale to long behavior to uh, transient and I'm gonna use it to control my two voices now we have also to make up a complex envelopes but we will we, we'll get into that later on so gate and gate my two trucks perfectly in unison and the point of the polymeter number one is to remove one stage which can be the last one This will create this uh, difference between the two sequences because one is uh, uh, one time unit shorter, so they are in sync. They are following the same tempo, but they are uh, sort of lagging from one from one another. And uh, I think that I am going to transpose my track 2 up one octave, so hold down shift all and the chorus button, add some reverb, okay. So, complex envelopes number 2. What I want to do is to set both generators to uh, time scale to long and uh, the green generator to transient and uh, the yellow generator also on transient. Uh, then I want to remove uh, the rising uh, segment, so set it to the slowest and the fastest time uh, possible. And then I'm going to use the green end of rise, which is gonna stay up as long as the falling stage is going and use it to change the behavior of the yellow generator. So I'm gonna patch it to the force loop input. And I'm gonna patch my final output to the mixing side, to the CGM. I'm gonna patch the green generator, green bipolar output to the wave folder so that you can hear how it sounds longer okay and whenever this is falling this is going to sorry wrong cable this is going to make the yellow oscillator loop now um, what I want to do is to patch the green at an inverted output to control the yellow falling duration. So now you hear that when the envelope starts, 
the yellow generator is slower and then it gets faster in a sort of bouncing ball kind of fashion. But if I do it the other way around, it will start fast and finish slow. And I can control the amount through the wave, uh, through the attenuator, attenuverter. And another thing that uh, we can do, uh, it, which was on the original patch, was to use the four quadrant multiplier and override the internal semi-normalization by using the green unipolar output to control also the yellow generator's amplitude. So, so the yellow envelope will get progressively uh, slow, um, smaller in magnitude as well as slower in rate and it can also work with the bouncing ball effect we will see what we can do with that so the third technique was the gate ratcheting and for that, I'm going to need um, my final output, which is already passed, okay. So I'm going to select, uh, since my, on track one, I have my gate A controlling this phalistry. I'm gonna use uh, gate B. And uh, this was a fairly easy technique because uh, it just patched a gate output to brain source ping input and used all the gates in ratcheting mode. So whenever So whenever there are more than two uh, values on the gate layer, they will no longer stand for a longer gate as for uh, the blue color, but whenever the color is green, it will repeat the gate. So it will create a two or three or four equally spaced gates within the time length, within the stage length. So this goes without saying that since this stage has a length of two, and this has length of one, if I set the same gate value over these stages, this will go much slower, as of actually two times slower than this one. And we can play also with odd time, so we'll play five. see how this sounds together with the first uh, I was wondering where we can use I'm not happy with the scale I know I started with the mixolydian but for this polymeter I think that the last note we have the easiest is to follow what's going on so I'm gonna switch to a major pentatonic whatever this one So, uh, 
I still need to fit my complex envelope here. So perhaps, because I was thinking to put it somewhere on the brain source complex section, we can try to do that. But since we have this already complex rhythmic pattern going on, I thought that it might be a little bit uh, confusing. So uh, another idea is to use the uh, another channel for, for just some pink noise and use this envelope, choose this one, to control its amplitude like this. Which is a sort of uh, uh, shaking percussion that I can control with a gate at the start of every cycle of track two which is the shortest one. So it's the one that is offsetting. So let's see if I can trig this track two. Let's add some reverb. Let's try with blue noise, which is a little bit more delicate. So I'm curious to see if I have some room to go even lower on track one. Uh, seems yes. So I'm going. Okay, nice. That's some low end. But you know what? We are not forced to use the gate ratchet only over the wave folder. For example, I could have used it also on track 2 to control Falister, but we might save this for another episode. So far, I like it. I think that we can cap it here for today, and I hope you like it too. And as always, uh, if you want to recreate this patch based on the three techniques that I used at the beginning, feel free to do so. If you want to share it, use the Frap Ideas hashtag, we'll be happy to take a look at what you came up with. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time.